In demo number two, we're going to be adding text and numbers. We're going to look at controlling the width of our columns and look at something called filling in using a data in sequence. So I am in cell A1. Both the name box tells me that as well as the fact that I'm in column one and row one. And what I'm going to do is type CIS120L and notice it does appear up here in the formula bar. I hit the enter key or the return key to secure that to the cell. A cell can only hold one piece of information. And notice by default when I hit the return key, it moves me to the cell right below where I was. So let's move even using arrows. I can use my arrows to move down to A3. I'm going to type in fall 2011. Hit my return. And now I'm again in A4 because it moves down in that direction. So I'm going to add some more information here before we uh, move on. And I don't want to bore you with my typing. So we're going to do a little pause here. And then I'll see you on the other side. So notice that I have added some information. I have some column titles. And in A5 through F5 are the column titles. And in A6, I have my first entry of a student name. Notice that in A5, I typed in student name, and it didn't um, fully show. And the reason is B5 is holding information. If B5 were blank, then name would show up because words or text are allowed to overlap the cell next to them, the adjacent cell. So I could type a nice long sentence if I wanted to, and it would just go through cell after cell after cell after cell. But the minute I type something into those cells, then the words or the text gets covered up in a sense. So that's where column width changes come into play, and we'll, we'll be working with that in a moment. I'll show you that right up here. I meant to type in CIS120 gradebook. So if I go up here to my formula bar, hit a spacebar, and type gradebook, and notice gradebook laps over into B1. So that's something to be aware of. It's not a major issue. It's just you get to change column widths so you can see the words. Now I mentioned that text can overlap like that. Numbers can't. Numbers have to fit into the column width that you create. And sometimes they don't fit. And so because of that, you have to definitely work with column widths to be able to see a number, particularly large numbers, and see them in the format that you set them up in. So I'm going to finish adding the students in this particular class from A7 on down. Uh, again, I'll be right back. You'll notice these new names. Several of them overlap into the B column. And if I type some scores in that B column, those names would not be seen. So we're going to do that after I finish one last student. So let's do a little catching up with uh, scores for these students. And notice the distinction when I start typing in these scores between the alignment of the text and the alignment of the numbers. See the difference? Text lines up on the left. It's a left alignment by default. You can change it, but right now it's all left alignment. Numbers, however, align as right alignment. So I'm going to continue again putting in these numbers, and uh, again, I'll be right back. So I added these scores one at a time using my keypad. 
hitting the enter key. So every time I hit the enter key, it moved down to the next cell, whereupon at the very bottom, I went up to the top using, you can use your arrow keys or you can use the mouse to click on that particular cell. Well, you'll notice since I was paying attention to the keypad, you'll notice I made a mistake here on Fred score um, under Excel 2, 600. It really should have been 60. So I can do one of two things. I can go up to the formula bar, hit the delete to go back and erase the zero and hit the enter key. Or I could just stay in that cell, hit the correct number, 60, and hit the enter key. So two ways. If it's not that serious uh, a change, it's just as easy to just click on the cell, type in the right number, and hit the enter key. Now it came to my attention, I left out the scores in word one over here. I'm going to widen column A before I put these scores in so we can actually see all of these. To widen a column, you just matter of several ways of doing it. Going between the two columns, the names of the two columns, there's a separator. And once I put it over that separator, I can click and drag. Now in Excel 2011, what you have here is character width and in parentheses, inches, which is a very wise way to do it because in Office 2010 for the PC, it's character width and pixels, which is a different way of measuring uh, text. Inches is so much better. So be careful if you're asked to change things in character width or if you're asked to change things in inches. Another way of changing a column width is just being in the column and using under the home ribbon over here the format pull down in the cells group and you can pick column width. Now notice the column width is based on inches. So you got to know how many inches you're going to deal with. So I'm going to type in 1.25 for one and a quarter inches. Hit the OK and my width moved just a little bit wider to compensate for those words. Now when I type in the numbers from B6 on down, you won't see them overlapping or hiding the names in the A column. There is another way. So we've done three ways here. Click and drag, click in the column, and use the format. There's another way of changing a column width and that's going to the separator and double-clicking. The thing that double-clicking does is it widens the column to the largest or widest piece of information you have. So in this case, CIS 120L gradebook is the widest piece. So it widens it so that gets completely engulfed in the column and there's no overlapping. So you got to be careful of that. So here we go. We can do it by moving like I'm doing now. I can go up to the format and use column width, or I can double click on the separator between the columns to change column width, those three ways. So I'm going to add my missing scores now. And there we go. We have our missing scores. Now I'm going to add the weeks above each one of these column titles the week that that's a part of. So I'm going to say week one. Hit the enter key, go back to that cell, that B4 cell. And I'm going to create a sequence, week one, week two, week three, and so on, down this row. To do that, I could type in week two, week three in each one of the cells, but Excel is smart enough to recognize the sequence. This little button right down here, this little square right down here on the bottom right hand corner of our cell, that when I get close to it, it becomes a crosshair, is called the fill handle. That fill handle is used for copying or using fill in using sequence. So if I click and drag across, notice it's previewing me what's going to go into that cell. We two, 
week three, four, and five. It automatically knows how to do that sequence. Now notice I have an option box over here ready to be pulled down that allows me to change that if that's not what I meant to do. If I meant week one all the way across, then I would use copy cells and it would become week one all the way across. In this case, it defaulted to fill the series because it saw it as a series. Or I just want to copy the format, so fill in the format only. Or fill without format. Normally, these two up here are going to be the ones that you use most often. Copy the cell or fill the series. If it's equations, it'll automatically copy the equation appropriately to the movement that you make. We'll talk about that definitely later. So there we go. We have an opportunity now to continue in demo three with this particular spreadsheet on this particular workbook. And it's CIS 120L gradebook.